Hi, welcome to another video. Happy New Year. Uh, I'm very glad to be back and very happy to let you know guys that I have many videos planned now. I've got my life together now, so expect more videos every week. So for this time, uh, we're starting with a ship. Uh, you've probably seen the thumbnail image, that's why you clicked on this video. So I'm starting with this ship that looks kind of like a delta wing. Kind of like a drone, you know, large wings, a uh, small body, very simple. Looks like a UAV, which is like an unmanned air vehicle or something like that. Uh, but in this case, my, my idea was that this is like a very futuristic ship that is actually being piloted from the vehicle. Um, honestly, I don't know how it would work. Just wanted to have something that would work uh, for the image sake. So the inspiration is like just this uh, very basic drone shape, but imagine this thing would be huge. So since I know that this uh, this little ship here is going to be tiny on the image, it's not the main focus of this uh, this picture. Um, I kept it very simple, just like wanted to make an, a statement of the function of the vehicle. So very large wings so you can see them from a uh, long distance and here I'm working on the engines which is the thing that I wanted to focus on the most so you could see from afar uh, as you can see here I'm starting to model a volume shape that I will use to create the exhaust so this I was testing new stuff uh, I kind of like the result that I got in the end and since we're looking to uh, to this shape from far away, we don't really need uh, much detail, so it really worked. In the future, I'd like to really go back into this shader and really um, polish something that would work like uh, at a very close up. Um, so basically, the way that I did it is just like created the shape, as you could see, and plugged a volume scatter uh, node into the volume socket and then I felt that it needed a little bit more detail so I added a noise texture to control the density and now as you can see I'm using a software called Gaia which is like a procedural terrain creator which is amazing to be honest uh, this was the third or probably second time that I tried this software uh, since you have to learn a few things to make it work to your heart's desire um, but yeah it's like uh, very fun I've been using it uh, here and there since then this is also like a video from a few months ago that I just uh, wasn't able to get back to edit and record some voiceover um, but uh, yeah since then I've been playing with it a little bit more and it's amazing um, but yeah, this was uh, one of the first times that I was using it and I was just like exploring things here and there Playing with a few of the nodes that you have available um, To create the two things uh, a canyon and a little mountain Previously on my workflow. I just used the ANT landscape add-on in blender, but then um, It came to a point in my work where I just needed like to more control to have more control and have way more detail and uh, some some people at work just recommended me to use this software so I purchased it it's it's very cheap too uh, you can get it like for a hundred bucks or something like that and yeah I've been experimenting with it it's very powerful and you get like different maps that you can then import to blender to create the um, the terrain uh, let me know if you want a tutorial about that. It's just like my knowledge is very basic But I'll be happy to guide you through the way that I use it uh, Which is like a very simple straightforward way So here I was figuring out how to use the maps from Gaia into Blender using just like a displacement modifier and It took a while to get it right because I also needed like some subdivisions and then I had to create a subdivision, adaptive subdivision uh, modifier to get all the detail back from Gaia and yeah here I'm creating the mountain which I forgot how I did the canyon so I just had to figure out how I did it again and 
Regarding to the shading, I just uh, plugged in like a texture of a rock. I think it's like from uh, Mega Scans, or it's probably like from the uh, Extreme PBR Combo Add-on, which are both great. And since I exported like a snow map from from Gaia, I just use a mix shader and then use the the map from Gaia, the snow map, to control the the density of, of the snow, which basically tells Blender where do you want to show snow and where you don't want anything. And by this point, I'm just like uh, instancing the, the shape, the plane, uh, with the displacement maps to create a very quick terrain. Again, I was just like experimenting things. I'm pretty sure by now I can create like a, a bigger a canyon straight from Gaia. But at this point, I just had to be uh, resourceful. So I just instance it using LD, create a bunch of those uh, canyon planes, and then uh, instance to a, a few of the mountains that I created in, in Gaia. Uh, I set up my camera, placed like a nice composition to, to my own opinion. And now I created a cube that I just extended uh, through the whole scene and added a volume scatter shader to create some volumetrics but it was like too bright so what I'm doing here is created a plane and plugged in a noise texture and that noise texture is going through to the um, sorry to, to the alpha uh, socket and I'm just playing with the values to to create something that I like because I wanted to create like some clouds covering the terrain to really show that the world is bigger than it is, like from this little scene. Uh, I export it to a mist pass, uh, so I can use it later in Photoshop, and at this point I just bring my, my ship here. Uh, activated the thirds overlay on the camera and position my, my ship on the lower uh, left um, intersection. And I, I noticed I had to increase the size of the, of the exhaust of the ship. So I just made it a little bit uh, larger. So you can see it from this composition. Here's a little pause. Uh, I am rendering the scene, but I forgot to change the recording to the, to the rendering window. So you just will see the viewport for a few seconds here while I'm rendering. And now I am in Photoshop where I will start like uh, finalizing the image, importing all the different maps that I had, which at this point is just the ambient occlusion, uh, the environment uh, pass layer, and I think the mist pass. So here I'm playing with the compositing of it all. I, I added like some texture, like some random texture because in that particular areas, the, the ones that are closer to the camera, um, I didn't have enough detail from the 3D. So I just had to quickly mask it using some overlays of some cliffs or something, just to create the illusion that there's more texture in there than it actually is and try to break the, the CG-ness of it a little bit. Uh, then I started like cloning, overpainting and using the, um, uh, the mixer brush to again get rid of some of those imperfections, the CG seams and where you can see some of the polygons in there. And I wanted to use like some clouds, but then I decided just to use like a brush to, to add a little bit more of uh, atmosphere uh, on the scene. Looking at it uh, back again, when I'm recording this video, I realized I could have used the mist pass to, to control the density of those clouds that I added later. But well, whatever. And now I'm just like uh, finalizing the values, created an overlay layer on top, painting black where I want it darker, white where I needed something lighter, and finally some color balancing, which you may or may not like, but it's a personal preference. Added a noise layer, and that's pretty much it. Just finalizing some values, adding some effects, and we're done. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Please subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want to see. Bye.